Hello and welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida. I'm Greg and today, today we're going to make some ghost candy for our Halloween assortment. We're continuing our tradition of doing two packs of candy for our Halloween assortment so one order gets you two bags. One will be the treat assortment and one will be the trick. The trick will be super sour and the treat will be sweet and fruity. And today, today, we're making the ghost for the treat. But I don't know if I was clear enough in my instructions about the ghost. So our ghost this year is an 8-bit ghost. And while the ghost may be a little bashful, it's going to be awfully sweet in the mix. The candy's already been flavored with blue raspberry flavoring because what would be better for a blue ghost? And he's adding food coloring and he's using the heat on the table or the residual heat of the candy as it cools to boil off the extra water in the food coloring. This batch he's also using white for to make the eyes pop in the candy and to improve the contrast between what's going to be translucent and not. The powder he's adding isn't sugar, it's citric acid because you need a little bit of citric acid to make the raspberry taste like raspberry. The candy is partially cooled and it's cooled unevenly. The bits that are against the bars are nice and cool, but the bits in the center are still liquid. This won't do, but two things can be done at once. The candy can be cut apart into its component colors because we've got to build a palette of colors. And while that's happening, the candy is folded and dripped, and this allows the temperature to even out so that each piece is about the same consistency. When it comes to sculpting the ghosts, this will be important. The next thing we need to do is to aerate the candy on the hook. This will accomplish two things. One of it is it'll make it even more white than even the food coloring can do by itself. But the other is the additions of thousands or hundreds of thousands of air bubbles. And these air bubbles are important in the candy to make the flavor right. You see, they're going to let this part of the candy dissolve a little faster than the rest. And that pop of flavor is one of the things that makes the candies here from Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection taste better than others. And I think you'll agree, although it's a lot of physical effort, it makes the final product so much better. If you're enjoying this video and you'd like to see others, please click on the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. If you want other materials from Lofty Pursuits, you can also listen to our podcast. Our podcast is also called Lofty Pursuits. And of course, you can get our Halloween assortment and all of our other candies at www.pd.net. All the pieces and all the colors are on the candy heating table. It's time to put the final image together. And I just think, I think I'm just going to sit here and watch and let you watch and enjoy the music. This is one of those shapes that's just really relaxing to watch being made. And I see no reason that, well, you shouldn't relax and I shouldn't relax while this video goes on.
One giant piece of candy has been made. But we need thousands, not just one. So it's time to scale the image down. And we do this playing around with the properties of the candy that's a non-Newtonian fluid. So it will pull and scale at the same time. We will end up with a lump, which we call a unicorn dropping and we sell in the store. But after that, the tapered image is perfect. And we move it on to a batch roller and the batch roller keeps this shape and keeps feeding it to us as we take the log down into rods of candy so that they can cool because a rod has more surface area as compared to the center than the big log does. Now all that's left is for us to cut them into individual bite-sized pieces. The final image came out wonderfully. And this is part of our trick and treat mix. Two different bags of candy that we sell together at www.pd.net. It's an assortment of different designs and different flavors. Don't forget to subscribe to us here, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Listen to our podcast, and if you're ever in Tallahassee, come and visit us. We're right off the Thomasville Road exit of I-10, and we're open seven days a week. We make candy a lot, but we don't make it every day. So if you're lucky, you can see us making our candy. And thanks again to our Patreon subscribers that get great benefits. Check it out if you're interested. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.